my YouTube friend. Wow, I'm really excited today. I got a big giant comic book haul to go through. I have a ton of packages I've purchased online, a couple things I've purchased in person, and I'm just really excited to go through these because I love doing the comic book hauls. If you guys love me doing the comic book hauls, please give this video a thumbs up. If I get to a thousand thumbs up, I'll do another comic book haul right away. Okay, so let's just start digging into these packages. Okay, in this box is a slabbed comic book. I paid $70 for this comic book. Uh, it's more than I would normally like to pay, but I decided for this comic book, it's probably worth it. All right, let's take a look in this box. Okay, so I paid $70 for this comic book and it's a Katie Keen Glamour number one. It's a one shot. It's from 1957. It's graded 5.5 CGC. Now, normally I've been trying to aim for like $20 an issue for the Katie Keen stuff for, I mean, 5.5 is a great grade for this age. You don't really see them in this grade that often. So I was, uh, you know, I looked up on CGC and I noticed that there's only two graded. So it's the second highest graded on CGC. So I figured $70, it's kind of worth it. You also don't see these that often. And when you do see them, they're just creased up everywhere. Now it does say that there's one piece attached with tape, which I think might be that corner. Not 100% sure. I mean, I can't look at it because it's sealed. Or maybe there's something going on right there. Not 100% sure. It didn't get dinged. It didn't get a green label though. It's a blue label. So I'm happy with that. It's got a little bit of an acid burn right here from a comic that was on top of it. Because what usually happens with the older comic books, anywhere it's printed, the acid kind of doesn't leach this out. But the edges of the comic books, the acid will leach out over time. So when two comics are on top of each other for many decades, it kind of burns it. So it's got a little bit of burn. But overall, I'm actually really happy with this comic book. I think it looks awesome. And it's another one off my list. I'm actually doing pretty good. I think I'm about a third of the way to get all the Katie Keen comics from the Golden Age or early Silver Age. So I'm actually really happy to get that. Okay, this is a box I bought a couple weeks ago. It's 14 comic books. I paid $15.50. Let's open up and see what it is. So I paid about a dollar a comic for this package. This package is packaged really well. It's like a cardboard brick wrapped in paper inside. Happy about that. So it was a lot of Charlton War comics. Bronze Age, maybe Silver Age. I forget if it goes back to the silver. But I thought these are cool. I like buying Charlton stuff because you don't see it as often. So it's a little bit different and fun for me. So we have Attack number 5. That's actually a pretty cool cover. Attack number 6. Attack number 7. Okay, we got another little bundle I got to open up. uh attack number three i think attack number two very cool cover attack number four okay attack number 12 that one actually looks in pretty good shape attack number 11 uh not sure that issue this is attack number 13 and attack number 21 attack number 46 oh, and a couple more little... <clears throat> attack number eight attack number nine and attack number 10. so i like collecting charlton comic books because they're relatively affordable you're paying a dollar comic book you're getting cool old bronze age stuff pretty cool deal Here's another box of comic books I bought a few weeks ago. I paid $17.79 for 10 comic books. Let's open up and check out what's inside. Okay, so in the box, it feels like he actually put it in like a cardboard wrap and then wrapped it with paper. So it's actually packaged really well. Yeah, it's like a little cardboard brick within the package. Awesome packaging job. Okay, so this was a Bronze Age lot of Superman comic books. And they look like they're in pretty decent shape. You know, fines, very fines. So we have Action 456 awesome cover action 455 really awesome cover action 454 absolutely love this era of superman comic books this one has a little bit of a subscription crease so it's a little bit lower condition action 452 another awesome cover action 451 action 450 action oh oh duplicates i can sell the duplicate and i'm sure any of these that i end up selling i probably get three or four bucks in my shop so i don't mind duplicates because it kind of pays for it action 449 nice thicker issue and action 448 so i'm actually really happy with those for a dollar 79 each i think that was a great deal i love bronze age stuff 
Okay, I bought this comic book a few weeks ago for $13.50, and they just shipped it in this envelope without any kind of protection. That's kind of disappointing it, but the comic looked like it arrived okay. But uh, some of the shipping online for comic books is terrible, especially people that don't do it regularly. But at the same time, that's how you get deals, because an uh, inexperienced comic book seller might sell something for cheaper. So let's take a look. Okay, so this was just a comic shipped without a bag, without a board, without any protection. Uh, I think it arrived okay. Uh, let's see, I paid $13.50 for it. So we have a Katie Keen Annual Number 5. I'm going to need the bag and board that. Uh, but the condition is not too bad. You know, it's got a little bit of creases on the top and the corners are a little bit chipping. But honestly, I thought $13 was a great price on this issue. It's probably worth at least double or triple that. Awesome. And the inside is really nice. I've been really enjoying collecting these Katie Keen comic books, so it's fun. I'll be kind of sad when I'm done, but I can always upgrade and start working on another series. Oh, I wanted to mention, it's been so hard to find good deals online. Ever since the quarantine started, a lot of people have been spending way more time online and prices of things have really just skyrocketed. So it's been a lot harder to find the deals. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been buying online too or like hunting and hunting and can't find the deals. But... I'm sure they'll come back eventually. And I am finding a few deals, as you can see. I think this is a single comic book. I paid $29.01. I just bought it a couple weeks ago. So let's open up, let's check it out. So this comic was packaged well. It's kind of like a sandwiched cardboard in the middle of the priority envelope. So that's kind of like the minimum I would like to see in a package. I think I got this comic at a steal because they had the wrong listing title. So I got it for $29. I think it's probably about a $50 to $100 comic book. So we have a Laugh Comics number 63. $29 for that seems like a really great price. And let me look at the condition. He listed it as only a good, but I looked at it. I think it was better than a good. I mean, the front looks very solid. There's no major like creases or anything. There's just some chips. Let's see how well the cover is attached because that kind of determines the condition as well. Ah, the spine is a little bit beat up, but it's not terrible. So it's maybe like a good plus to a very good, maybe a good plus because the spine is kind of beat up and I guess that's what he was talking about. Still, I think $29 is a great price on that comic. Awesome. Happy to get that. And this is kind of the low grade I enjoy. And the reason why I say that is because I got it for a great price. If this was like a fine, it'd probably be like a couple hundred bucks. So the price was cheap, but the condition looks nice enough. There's no major like damage that takes away from the image. So I feel like I can really enjoy the cover and enjoy this issue at a price that's very affordable. Awesome. Okay, these three comic books I bought at a flea market last fall. I paid $10 for the three comic books. Okay, so these are three comic books I bought at flea market. The guy had a like an eight dollar each two for ten bin. So I saw this comic called The Brain Number Three, a really cool looking Golden Age comic book, in pretty decent shape. So I saw that, and then he had a what was it? I think it was three dollars each or four for ten bin. So I basically said if I took two of those, and I took that, would he do ten? And he said yes. So I grabbed a sorcery. Absolutely love this cover. I think it's amazing. It's got a little bit of a crease on the corner. 1974 very very cool and then i got a scary tales number one whoops let me take it out of the bag because you can't really see the cover with all the stickers so i thought that was a pretty awesome cover interior artwork is fun too really cool so i for 250 each for those two and five dollars for the golden age comic book i thought it was a pretty good deal Honestly, I'm just looking for any kind of Golden Age comics I can find for a cheap price right now because I absolutely love them. It just, it's fun and it's different and it's something I don't see every day. Whereas the stuff from like the 80s and 90s, I see all the time. This group of comic books I also bought at the flea market in the fall. I paid $10 for it. Uh, okay, so this was, let's see, one, two, three, six comic books that I paid $10 for at a local flea market last fall. I think he had him priced at two bucks. I grabbed six and he said I could pay 10. So he gave me a little bit of a discount. So that's pretty awesome. So we have a Superman 291. Again, I love this Bronze Age era Superman stuff. I think the covers are just so much fun. Uh, this is very cool. We have an Amazing Spider-Man 360. I think the value on this has skyrocketed since I bought it. So paying like $1.50 for that. Now it's not in the best shape. It's got a little bit of wear. So it's probably like a very fine minus, but still for oh, and it's got a little bit of a crease on the back, but still $1.50, awesome to pick that up. And then he had two copies of it. 
This one I think is slightly better. Yeah, this one's slightly better. So that's like a very fine. So I'll pick those up any day for $1.50 or $1.66. And then we have a Superman 286, another awesome Bronze Age Superman. Superman 302. Uh, a lot of this stuff I might have already. I just, when it's cheap, I'll grab it just because I love it so much. And then a Superboy 159. So I thought those are really good deals for the price. Okay, this is a package of six comic books. I paid $13.50 for it. I so was that like 220 a comic book and I just bought this a couple weeks ago. So let's open up, let's check out what's inside. Okay, so I paid 1350 for this. It was six comic books and I forget. Oh yeah, I remember this lot. Okay, so it's a golden age lot. I think I got it for a really good deal. It was actually two auctions I won for four dollars and fifty cents each, and then it was like four dollars shipping. So I think this is actually a great, great deal for the price I paid. So we have Little Lada number 24. It looks in pretty decent shape. Oh, he's got them sandwiched in here. So let's, let's pull these out. Whenever you remove tape on this kind of stuff, I always stick it on the cover like that, just because I don't want any tape pulls. Okay, so first lot. We have Little Lada number 24. It's in pretty decent shape. It's got a little bit of a tear there, but still very nice looking copy. We have uh, Little Audrey and Melvin, number 56. So this is Bronze Age, it's not all Golden Age, but this one looks like it's in really nice shape. Probably a fine plus, even a very fine maybe. This is a couple spine ticks, but it's not terrible. And then uh, Casper, 167. So I paid 450 for this. It's worth it just for the little lot. Of, I mean, the Casper and the little Audrey, you know, they're probably a couple dollars each. So it wasn't like a huge deal. But this lot, I think I got a really good price on. So we have some Golden Age Charlton Romance comic books. I love you. I don't know the number on that. Let's look at it. This actually looks really nice too. There's no major damage. It's a little bit tanned and a little bit soiled, but no like rips or tears or creases. Maybe a little chip right there. Probably a very fine to a fine. I think it's closer to the fine because I don't see any major damage. So it says number 24 uh, from 1959. So awesome price on that one. We got Just Married, another Golden Age or very early Silver Age Charlton Romance comic book. This one again looks really nice. Definitely a fine probably because I don't see any major damage to it. It's just a little bit soiled and a little bit tanned and some very light hints of wear. So number nine, also from 1959. Very cool. And then I think this is the one that has the most value. So we have Romantic Adventures. I don't know the numbers. I'm gonna look at this one as well. Oops, gotta remove that tape. Hate taped bags, they're the worst. I'm gonna put new bags and boards on all of these. Romantic Adventures, this one also looks very nice. Probably around a fine. There's no major damage. Just a little, little teeny bit of creasing right there and a little bit of tanning. And this is, uh, let's see, my own, I don't see the number, but it's also from 1959. And it's a little bit tanned inside, but not too bad. Okay, very awesome. I'm actually really happy with those. It's so hard to find old romance for a good price. So the price I paid was awesome. All right, this is a package of six comic books. I bought these back last November. I misplaced this package, so I didn't make it into my earlier comic book calls. So let's check it out. I paid $9.45 shipped for this package. Okay, so this is my lost package from November 12th, 2019. So this is back when I could still find some deals. Five comic books, so less than $2 a piece. That's actually pretty awesome. So we have a Archie 112. Uh, it's got a couple like water spots on it and it's kind of be, it's probably only a good, but I think this comic alone is probably worth the $9 I paid. So I'm actually really happy to get that. We have a Blondie number 128. It looks like that staple pop, but again, under $2 for that great price. Blondie number 131. This one looks like that corner is a little bit beat up and a little bit there, but still I paid super cheap on it. So happy to get that. And then we have Cicero's Cat. I don't know the number, but I thought it was just a really cool looking cover. So definitely worth the price I paid. And then this is the only one that was kind of lower. I mean, the comic itself, I bet looks really good because a lot of times these with the cut that were returned back in the day, the comics themselves a lot of times look untouched. 
but you know, it's got the top cut. So that's a little bit of a shame, but still, even if you took this one out and I paid 250 for the other four, awesome price. Okay, this comic book I paid $40 for. I bought it a couple months ago on Macari using some of my Macari credit. If you guys haven't checked out comic books on Macari, I'm gonna put a link in the description below. That'll give you $10 off your first purchase of 20 bucks. So even if you think the prices are a little bit high, you can use that coupon. And I think it also, if you decide to sell on Macari, if you sell $100 worth of stuff on Macari, I think they give you an additional 20 or 30 bucks. It's actually a pretty generous offer that they give you if you sign up through the link. All right, let's check out this comic book. Okay, this comic is pretty awesome. I got this on Macari. It was 40 bucks. She had it listed for 50 or 60 and I did an offer for 40 bucks like the end of last year and she didn't take it. But then she got back to me and she said she would take it now. So we have Betty and Veronica annual number three. Very cool cover. I love this issue. Uh, it has one big flaw and that's the spine is coming detached. I don't know how much that affects the grade, but it looks like that's very common for this issue. I see a lot listed right now where the spine's coming detached. But overall, it's a very clean, presentable copy. The spine is kind of messed up, but the main image looks good. There's a little bit of a nick or something going on right there, but I think it looks beautiful. Very awesome comic book. Happy to get that. I love getting all these Golden Age Archie stuff. All right, this comic book I bought a month ago for $21.38. Let's see what it is. Okay, this comic book, I paid $21.38. Again, this was shipped in just an envelope. No packaging, no protection. I was kind of disappointed on that, but it arrived in really nice condition. Like, it was better than I thought it was going to be. So we have a Katie Keene pinup parade number two. Uh, in the pictures, the back looked dirty. And it's a little bit dirty, but in person, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit warped or something's going on. But you might be able to press that. But the overall presentation of this issue, it looks really nice. It has a little bit of acid burn lines right here, but the main image is very clean and I think it's just a really wonderful cover. Very awesome. I think $21 was actually a really good price on this comic as well, because uh, some of the earlier issues do sell for a lot more. Awesome. A friend of mine sold me this stack of Marvel Magazine comic books for a good price. Uh, absolutely wonderful stuff. I love these. Let's take a look through this stack. Okay, these are super exciting to me. I absolutely love this line. I know I have some of them, but I also know that I'm missing a few. So I was actually happy to pick these up for my friend. So we have a Howard the Duck number seven. Absolutely love this cover. I love the man thing in the background. The girl looks cute. Howard is like just going through the swamp and you have the little frog there. I love the overall composition. Very awesome cover. We have Howard the Duck number six. Another awesome cover. Howard the Duck number five, uh, not as awesome a cover, but I still absolutely love it. Howard the Duck number eight, another awesome cover. Howard the Duck number nine, another awesome cover. Uh, Will Eisner's The Spirit number 25. Howard the Duck number four. Absolutely love all these Howard the Duck magazines. Howard the Duck number two. And Howard the Duck number three. I think my friend kept the number one. He likes to keep kind of the key issues. I think he got all these really cheap. I think he doubled or tripled his money selling them to me at wholesale prices. <laughs> so happy pick all those up. Awesome. Okay, this is a package of 12 comic books. I paid $19.29 for So that's like a dollar sixty-ish each. Uh they just shipped it in this bubble envelope. So and it doesn't feel like there's any other protection. Uh, comic shipping. Some people just don't know how to ship comic books. So let's hopefully they arrived okay. Uh, I think it was a really good price though. So let's open it up and check out what's inside. Okay, so I paid a dollar sixty for these, but they they actually look like they arrived pretty good. So it was a stack of Sonic the Hedgehog comic books. A dollar sixty is great. A lot of these are kind of collectible and harder to get cheap. And these look like they were all subscription copies that have not been opened. So that's actually a little bonus to me. I actually really like that. So we have number one sixty nine. 164 again this one has been opened but is another subscription copy number 158 which was a subscription copy but missing the mailer number 165 subscription copy number 152 uh number 153 so all these were subscription copies but they look to be in pretty decent shape number 170 number 159 Number 162, number 163, number 168, and number 160. I love collecting the Sonic the Hedgehog, and I think in the long run, a lot of these are going to have value. Especially these are from early 2000s. I don't think the print runs are very high on these. So yeah, I think these are easily worth probably 5 to $10 a piece, maybe even more. 
So I'd pick them up all the time for a buck or two. Awesome. All right, I have this bag of comic books. It's a mystery bag. One of my regular customers, he brought this in right before we had to close down for the pandemic. He was going to trade it for store credit, but he, uh, after we closed down a few weeks later, he said, you know what, you can have them as a gift. He's just the nicest guy. He's just really generous. Every time I try to give him store credit for stuff like that, he's like, no, 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 you take them. I know you'll enjoy them. So I'm actually kind of excited to see what it is. He usually has a lot of newer, like Star Wars comic books or uh, just other newer releases that I don't have. So let's go through this bag and see what's inside. All right, let's go through this mystery bag. I have no idea what's in here. I'm guessing there's gonna be some Star Wars stuff, maybe some other newer stuff, some older stuff, I don't know. He just, he reads them all, so he consumes them. So he basically buys them, reads them, and then he gets rid of them. He's a reader, not really a collector. Okay, oh, this is cool. We have a 180 reprint. That is actually really cool. We have the House of Secrets 92 reprint, first appearance of Swamp Thing. That's actually really cool. Uh, Judge Dread number two, and this looks like it's signed by the, I'm not sure who signed it, the cover artist maybe? Not sure. That is awesome though. Judge Dread number nine, number four. Love these covers. Number three, number 12, number 11, number 10. So you probably had like a whole run of these that you want to get rid of. Number eight. Uh, Marauders number one. That's cool. I love getting the newer stuff just because I don't have a lot of the newer stuff. Marvel Comics 1000. That's actually really awesome. Marvel Comics 1001. Uh, New Mutants number one. Awesome cover. New Mutants number two. I absolutely love it when he brings in the newer stuff because I don't really collect new comic books until I get them. So I don't really collect new comic books until I get them and trade. Uh, okay, this is cool. Shotgun Mary number one. I actually really enjoyed the Warrior Nun show. So this is cool. Uh, is this Son of the Beast one limited? I don't know if this is a super rare comic book or what's going on with this. But it's got some kind of sticker on there that says limited to 100. So that I'm going to have to research. That is cool. Okay, we have a Spider-Man number one. Awesome. Spider-Man number two. Star Wars number two. The Rise of Kylo Ren, number three. Star Wars, number 69. And again, I love getting the Star Wars stuff. He kind of fills in my collection for me. Star Wars, 68. Star Wars, 71. Star Wars, 70. Dr. Aphra, number 37. Star Wars, 72. Star Wars, 75. Star Wars, 74. Tales of Suspense, reprint. I guess this reprint's uh, early Iron Man. Or early Tales of the Suspense. Okay, that's cool. X-Force number one. Uh, another... It's just a Virgin variant, so I'm not sure which comic that is, but that is cool. And X-Men number two. Okay, awesome. That first bag was really fun. Okay, now the second bag of comic books that he gave me. Okay, so we have uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one. I haven't seen that before. Uh, True Believers, First Appearance of the Absorbing Man. A Pama number eight. Not even sure what that is. Number five, number six, number seven, number nine, number 10. Have you guys read this? Is this any good? Uh, True Believers Avengers, I guess it's the first appearance of Ultron. Uh, another, not True Believers, but whoever the DC version of the reprints are, the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul. That is cool. A uh, Detective 607, uh, reprint of first appearance of Batgirl. That is cool. Detective 554. We got some early 90s indie comics. Doofus, number one. That is cool. I kind of like the kind of goofy indie stuff. So this is fun. Doofus, number two. Uh, oh, this is a cool Doom Patrol, number four. I kind of wanted to collect a bunch of Doom Patrol stuff because I'm really enjoying the series. And I like the covers for the Young Animals series. So that is actually really cool. Excalibur, number one. Uh, Fantastic Four, King Size 6 reprint. Um, Frankenstein, Wild One, number one. A Hawkman 11 variant cover. That is cool. Hellboy and the BPRD number one. Number three. Uh, not sure the number on that one. And I am not seeing a number on that one either. But these are cool. Number two. Hellboy Winter Special. And Hellboy versus Lobster Johnson. And oops, we got Star Wars here. Uh, Star Wars reprint. And a Marco Zorro number one. Okay, very cool. 
Thank you. That was a pretty awesome little collection of comic books. Okay, I have this stack of bronze and silver comic books. Uh, they're kind of beat up and ratty, so they're very low grade. But I, the people that trade them in, they trade in a lot of old comic books like this often, and they usually only take some stuff that just like stuff that I didn't pay a lot for. So I'm usually pretty generous. I think I gave them forty dollars store credit, or it might have been forty dollars total. They traded in some other stuff. So for the comics themselves, it might have been like thirty dollars store credit. Honestly, I don't know how much these are worth just because of the condition. A lot of them are only goods or less. But let's go through the stack and see what's in here. It's kind of fun. Okay, so here we have this collection of bronze and silver age comic books. Uh, I'm probably gonna take them out of the bag because I need the bag and board them. They just had them all in these old ratty bags. So I don't know if they've been sitting in their house for years, but let's see what we got. Okay, we got Captain Marvel number 17. Again, a lot of these are low grade and this is one of the nicer looking ones. So this kind of stuff I would like to give more, but you just can't because you can only sell it for a couple bucks even though it's old and awesome. But again, they usually trade for a bunch of stuff that I don't mind trading, like some magazines and some CDs and some DVDs and things that they want to consume and enjoy. So I, you know, I'm usually pretty generous with the trade for this stuff because I love, love, love old comic books, even if they're beat up like this. So we have a Jimmy Olsen number 133. I was kind of hoping they had a 134 in the stack, but that's okay. A DC Comics Presents 22. I'm going to take all these out. But as you can see, you know, dog-eared, fingerprint. These are well-loved comic books. Superboy number two. And they need bags and boards. DC Comics presents number seven. Do love this stuff, though. Flash number 254. Awesome old comics. Adventure Comics number uh, 468. We have a classic illustrated 149 and it's falling apart. Uh, Twilight Zone comic book. That is really cool. I love these painted covers that the Gold Key comics have from the 60s. Awesome. It's really, really beat up though, which is a shame. Uh, Gru number 40. Gru is actually probably one of my all time favorite comic books. So I always love to see those. I have a pretty much a complete set though. I'm not really looking for that. Uh, Muppet magazine. That is cool. Someone that's probably the thing that's the most value in this cloud. I'll get five to ten dollars out of that. People love that kind of stuff. Uh, Venture Comics number 470, Brave and the Bold 169, Marvel Premiere. Oops, this is a stack in there. Marvel Premiere 60, Doctor Who, Doc Savage number one. Really bad shape though. Outsiders number 10. We have a first issue special number 10. This is probably the first appearance of the Outsiders because this series usually has the first appearances. And then the next bag of comics are really awesome, but low grade. Like if these were a little bit better condition, it would have been amazing. We have Captain America number 109. It's got a big chip out of there. Uh, I mean, it's still a very, oh, and it's got a big chip out of there. Still a very desirable comic book, even in low grade. Captain America 128. Captain America 131. Love those. Okay, let's get this out. Swing with Scooter number 10. I actually love this cover. I love these kind of fun, cute, goofy covers. Uh, the thing is falling apart though. Very awesome. Okay, some more old Silver Age stuff that's awesome. Just really beat up. These things are falling apart. So we have a Fantastic Four 57 where the covers are detached. Honestly, I could probably still get like two bucks out of that if I was going to sell it, but I have to double check. I'm not sure if I have that issue. Uh, Fantastic Four number 99. Uh, this is cool. This is a pre-DC Plastic Man, I believe. So Plastic Man number 16. I thought that was actually pretty awesome. You know, again, not in great shape, but still fun. And then Plastic Man number two. This one might have some more value to it, even though it's really beat up. I didn't really look this one up. Probably should. So that one is cool. Yeah, even in this really low grade, I think it's still probably worth five to 10 bucks. Very cool. You know, nothing that I'm excited to add to my collection. There's some stuff I probably will just as placeholders until I find better copies, but still fun. So I was contacted a, a while ago. I think I got these a few months ago. But uh, this guy named Sean, he messaged me and he said that he started buying comic book lots and looking for comic books on Craigslist and whatnot. And he bought a pretty awesome collection of stuff. And he was mostly looking for superhero stuff. 
he came across a bunch of Charlton cartoon comic books in pretty decent grade. They're all like probably fines, the very fines. I do need the bag and board them though because I don't want them to get beat up. But for Charlton comic books, they actually look in really nice shape. He said, it was I interested? And I said, sure, I'll give you like a buck a piece. I figure a buck a piece is very fine. And he was actually very happy for that. I think that paid for a lot of what he paid for the entire collection he bought. And uh, I had Mercari credit, so I told him to throw him on Mercari and I would buy him. So that's what I did. Very awesome. All right, let's go through these. I'm excited to go through them. I have only kind of looked at them a little bit, but I haven't really gone through them. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, this collection is actually pretty fun to me because the condition is really nice. He actually, he said he got some Wonder Woman comics in too, which I like collecting Wonder Woman. I actually want to collect a lot more Wonder Woman comic books. So he threw a couple in for free, which I thought was awesome. So we have Wonder Woman 227 absolutely love that okay now the charlton comic books most of these are in fine to very fine condition so and for this age of charlton a lot of times they're yellowed so i was actually really happy to see them it's a little bit tanned but it's not terrible okay so we have a blondie 216 a flintstone starring dino 15 i actually really like that cover uh flintstone's neighbor barney and betty rubble number 21 beetle bailey 119 and the thing is, the Charlton stuff is printed on, like, lower quality paper, and that's why it yellows more often. So I thought this was really cool. Okay, we have Speed Buggy, number 7. Flintstone starring Dino, number 17. Flintstones and Pebbles, number 41. Flintstone starring Dino, number 14. Pebbles and Bam Bam, number 35. Scooby-Doo, number 6. The Scooby-Doo ones are really cool to me. Uh, Casper 228. Not as exciting, but still cool. I do like Casper. Uh, okay, it looks like there's a duplicate. Speed Buggy number 7. So a couple of the duplicates I will pull out for my shop. Uh, the Flintstone starring Dino number 19. Number 14. Beetle Bailey 113. Uh, another Wonder Woman he threw in. Number 240. That is awesome. Beetle Bailey number 114. Beetle Bailey 117. Number 115. Uh, Hong Kong Fui number nine. That is cool. All right, we have another stack. It was actually a pretty large collection of this stuff. Uh, okay, Beetle Bailey 113. So I guess there are duplicates, which are fine. I actually like getting duplicates in collections like this because I can sell them and make some of my money back. And if I'm lucky, maybe make enough back to kind of pay for the whole thing. Okay, number 117. Pebbles and Bam Bam, number 35. So yeah, definitely some duplicates. Flintstones 43. Barney and Betty, number 17. This one's a little bit more beat up. But it's still overall very nice. Uh, Barney and Betty, number 23. Speed Buggy, number 7. There's a bunch of those. Another Scooby-Doo. That is awesome. I think the Scooby-Doo's probably have the most value in these. Uh, Beetle Bailey, 113. Or 117, I mean. Number 113. Number 115. Uh, Blondie, 222. Beetle Bailey, 117. Another Speed Buggy. So yeah, a lot of duplicates, but that is okay. I like duplicates. Uh, number 119, Beetle Bailey. Number 119, uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam, 35. More duplicates. Flintstones, number 45. Flintstones, 41. Beetle Bailey, 118. Blondie, 222. Beetle Bailey, 114. Beetle Bailey, 119. Pebbles and Bam Bam, number 36. Flintstones, 41. Dino, 14. Hong Kong Fui, number 9. And Barney and Betty, number 18. Okay, very cool. Okay, and the last deck. Okay, this one has a little bit of water damage. This one's worth a little bit less. We have uh, Flintstones with Dino, number 16. The Great Grape Ape, number 2. That one's actually really cool. Too bad it's water damage, but still, happy to see that. Speed Buggy, number 9. Dino, number 19. Dino, number 13. Hong Kong Fui, number 4. Flintstones 47, Pebbles and Bam Bam 34, Hong Kong Fui number 9, Dino number 13, Wooly and the Chopper Bunch number 6, that is really cool. Uh, another duplicate, <laughs> more duplicates, Hong Kong Fui number 5, Blondie number 222, oh Yogi Bear, that's cool, Yogi Bear number 32, Hong Kong Fui number 7, this one's also water damage. I didn't realize there's some water damage ones, but that's okay, I paid cheap on these. I think most of these that are in better shape, if I was to sell them, I'd probably get like $3 for the less interesting stuff like Blondie, but I think some of the Flintstone stuff might get $5, $10 because it's a little bit more collectible. Some of the, like the Great Grape Ape would probably be worth a lot. Okay, Hong Kong Fui number 4, Willy and the Chopper Bunch number 7, Speed Buggy number 9, 
Uh, oh, another copy, and this one looks in better shape. Okay, that is very cool, actually. Okay, Hong Kong Fui number eight, Blondie number 222, Blondie number 221, Dino number 13, Yogi Bear number 31, that is cool. Uh, Barney and Betty number 18, another Yogi Bear number 34. Uh, oh, the Great Gazoo. That is cool. Number 18. I think that one probably would have a bit more value. Uh, another duplicate. More duplicates. Uh, oh, okay. That is cool, too. Another Great Gazoo. Number 19. Number 14. Okay, those are cool. Yogi Bear number 33. Dino, number 19. So, like, stuff like this. I think the Flintstone stuff is very collectible as well. The Great Gazoo is probably collectible. So, some of these are probably 5 to $10 comics. Okay, number 19. Uh, number 17, Yogi Bear, number 30, Great Kazoo, number 19, again, very cool, I love those. Number 14, uh, Dino, number 16, another duplicate, and Pebbles and Bam Bam, 30. So that was really awesome. Thank you, Sean, for selling me the comic books. I really appreciate it, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with these. Thank you. Okay, let's go through these two bundles of comic books. That's uh, let's see, forty comic books for thirty bucks. I bought these back in February. Uh, when the box arrived, the box is completely destroyed, so I thought they would be bad. But I pulled them out, and they look like they're okay. So I threw out the box, but I still have the comic books. I haven't gone through them yet. So let's check out this group of comic books. Let's see if I got anything good. Okay, so this package was forty comics for thirty bucks, so about seventy-five cents a comic. Uh, I think it was a lot of Bronze Age Archies, so not too exciting for me. Stuff I can definitely sell for a couple bucks if I want to make a profit. I'll probably keep all the ones I need. But the main thing is I think there was one or two Golden Age Archies mixed into the slot. So that probably alone will pay for the lot. And everything else is a bonus. So let's look in here and see what we can find. These I'll probably just go through real quick. Just because I'm looking... You know, this stuff from the... was it? Yeah, the 80s stuff doesn't really interest me that much. Uh, this is cooler, the Bronze Age stuff, especially a sci-fi cover like that. That's actually pretty cool. But again, the 80s stuff doesn't really excite me as much. Oh, I do like the Bronze Age Richie Riches, though. So that's very cool. And any Harvey stuff is fun for me. More Richie Rich, okay. Love getting these Richie Riches. I would like to get a full run of all the Richie Rich comics. Some more cheaper Archies. So a lot like this is kind of like a filler. When I buy an Archie lot like this, I usually like to try to find a lot that has some Golden Age mixed in. So you can buy it for cheap Bronze Age prices, but you end up getting something of greater value. And I sell them really easily for a buck or two in my shop. So if there's anything I want to get rid of, I can get my money back. Okay, Josie and the Pussycats, number 64. That's actually pretty cool. It's a horror cover, and the horror cover Archie comics actually tend to have more value. But the ones from the early 60s are the ones that are really highly sought after. Early 70s, not as much. Still a very awesome comic. Even though it's kind of beat up, you probably get $5 out of that if you're going to sell it. Okay, some more cheaper Betty and Veronica stuff. Also, when I buy a lot like this, I'm always hoping that maybe I'll get the first Shadow Blossom or another comic book that's more valuable. Okay, some bronze Archies, which are better. Prefer the Bronze Age stuff than the stuff. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this was worth it. Ah, it's pretty beat up. We got Archie's Pals and Gals, number five. The spine is split right here. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but I, I think I actually have this issue already. So this is lower than the one I have. So I could probably sell this. Oh, and this one page looks like it's loose. So I could probably sell this issue for $10 easily and get a good chunk of my money back. Maybe even more because Pals and Gals is a pretty sought after issue. Okay, more newer stuff. So, and I think the rest of this is all newer stuff. Okay. Okay, and then there's another little batch from that package. Okay, we'll just blast through these as well because I don't think there's anything else in the lot. Oh, cool. Old hot stuff is fun. Newer Archie's not as exciting to me. Do you like the hot stuff stuff? And Casper. Richie Rich. Little Archie. Richie Rich. Betty and Me 133. Okay, yeah, so nothing else too exciting to me. Oh, that's cool. I don't have any of the 80s Katie King comics, or I might have just like one or two. So I actually would like to get those as well. I just, the artwork just does not do it for me. <laughs> you know, the early, the silver and gold age stuff is wonderful. This just looks kind of cheesy. Yeah, not as cool, but still a decent lot. Again, whatever I would sell, I could easily get a buck or two. So I would triple my money basically if I were to sell everything. And I knew, do need to replace maybe like 30 Archies a month. Okay, so this is what I call like a gamble mystery box. 
I paid $106.95. I believe it's just over 100 comic books, so I paid about a dollar a comic book. Some of them look like they're really beat up. They look like a stack of some coverless stuff. But there's also some stuff that I, there might be a chance of something really awesome. It's kind of a gamble, but I love buying lots like this because they don't look nice. But when you buy them, there's always a high chance that you'll get something of value that kind of pays for the whole collection. Okay, let's dig through this box. This is going to be fun. All right, mystery box time. I kind of printed out the picture so I can talk about it. Uh, I'm going to put a better copy of the picture on the screen while I read the description. Okay, let me read the description. 100 plus lot of comic book issues found on a dusty shelf while cleaning out my parents home i'm not a comic expert no grades applied a small minority are missing covers none are excellently shaped please see photo to get idea of issues and conditions i believe this includes gold and silver bronze age based on the price of the cover but again i'm no expert some include superman batman robin lois lane archie rintintin casper flash etc item in hand ready to ship okay so what I like about a lot like this, I mean, it's rough. You see a whole stack here. Let's get the picture so we can talk about it. So if you see right here, there's a stack of coverless stuff. So we know overall there's 100 comic books. This is going to knock out 20. So I'm basically buying 80 comic books. If you're lucky, there might be a key issue that's coverless. And if you are lucky, then you'll get some value back. But I'm assuming those are worthless. So I paid $100, a dollar an issue, but you're taking away those 20. So I probably paid about $1.25. It might have been a little bit high. I actually don't see any Batman in the picture. So somewhere hidden within here is a secret Batman comic book. So that alone might be worth it. If it's a Silver Age Batman comic book, boom, you have a lot of value. Not sure. So this is what I was looking for. I was looking for old Archie comic books. So I see three Betty and Veronica's. These are early 60s, early 60s. Even in good to very good are going to be 5 to $10. So that alone was kind of a good chunk of the value. I really like this little Lulu cover. I thought this was a cool looking comic book. The condition looks very low grade though. So I'll have to see in person to see how much I like it or not. Um, I noticed, let's see, we had one, two, three, four, five, six DC comic books, all Bronze Age. Uh, they have a little bit of value. They're not worth a whole ton, but those six, two, three dollars a piece probably, they look like they're probably like goods, the very goods just in the picture. So would I say one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, twelve to eighteen dollars plus another fifteen? So I'm at like forty dollars so far just on what I see there. Um, so that's a third of my value to half my value. And then this looks like it's all Dell four colors or other Dell Golden Age stuff. So these, depending on condition, if they're low grade, a couple bucks. If there's anything that hops in here that's uh, very good or better, you all of a sudden might have some $10, $20 comic books mixed in there. So I kind of like that. There's one cool old Fox and Crow DC comic book there. Uh, in here, I think this is Silver Age Archies. I see a couple other giant series, so there might be a few Archies in here that are worth a little bit. I do like the Silver Age or Early Bronze Age Richie Riches. Again, not worth a ton, a dollar or two. Uh, but then this stack here looks like it's all Golden Age stuff. Mostly Dells. This one is an Archie comic book. This one's got my curiosity peaked. Not 100% sure of that, but I think that might have some value. There's a Superman comic book here peeking out. That might have a little bit of value. So I took a gamble. We're going to see. Oh, and then there's some stuff here that looks like it's some Golden Age, maybe Silver Age stuff. Like these look like Silver Age. This looks like maybe Golden or Early Silver. So overall, uh, it might be a bomb. It might be like I lose money. No, I don't think I can lose money because I paid cheap enough that even if I were to sell all these beat up comics for like two bucks a piece, I would double my money. I'm not really looking to sell. I'm looking for my own collection, but if there's a duplicate or something I have already, I will sell it. But I love buying collections like this because I've done really well. You never know what's kind of hiding in these stacks. The person sounds like they didn't really know what they were doing. They kind of put some of the superhero stuff on the top. I think tried to make it look nicer. But I looked also I looked at the listings. So sometimes you'll see a listing like this and you'll see the people have a thousand other comic books listed. This looks like he just had a bunch of stacks of other junk probably from his parents' house for sale. So I like this lot. It's worth a gamble. Let's dig in and see if it's worth it. So when I say I buy, I like mystery boxes, I don't like mystery boxes made up by stores trying to get rid of the crap they can't sell. I like buying lots like this where it's just a random pile from someone's house or some family member's house from years ago where you never kind of know what's in the stack until you look through it. Okay, he used this box here. It looks like it was for pantyhose or something, but it's a vintage box. I bet there's some value just in that box. Okay, so he stacked these just in bags. There's three bags like this full of comics. Mm -hmm. Okay, bag one looks like we have the the coverless stuff. Uh, this might be Betty and Veronica number four coverless. 
I bet that still has some value even without its cover. That's actually kind of cool. All right, maybe some of the coverless stuff. I mean, it's silver age coverless. There could be some value in there. That is neat. Or even if I, I've been thinking about, because I do have a lot of coverless stuff. I've been thinking about printing out colored copies of the covers and putting them in my shop for like a buck or two each just to sell some of it. Uh, the Rumble number 29. He has the number on there. So I don't know. You know, some of this coverless stuff might have a little bit of value. Okay, what is this line of Sparta number 28? Uh, okay, this one's missing the top. We have a Yogi Berra, but it's early 60s. Okay, Detective Comics 307. Okay, so my comic shop has a very good for 40 bucks. So coverless, I bet that's still worth a couple bucks. Uh, okay, here we go. We got the early Silver Age Betty and Veronica number 81 uh it's probably a good good plus not too bad that is cool like i said that one has some value to it and my comic shop is selling a fair for five bucks and a very good for 15. so in this condition if they were selling it they'd probably want like 10 bucks for it so if i was to sell it i'd probably get like seven out of it maybe six so that's not too bad and then we have two copies similar condition but still very cool and then we have number 86 this one looks like it's almost yeah it's almost detached Still very cool though. All right, Sugar and Spike number 42. Cool comic book, not in great shape. Uh, Duncan Lock cover looks like it's coming detached, but it's kind of fun. Dr. Kildar. I don't know what this kind of stuff is worth. I don't know if that's a, actually, it might be a four color. No, Dr. Kildar number six. So my comic shop is selling a good for four dollars a very good for seven so it's probably in like that four or five dollar range okay that's not too bad the more stuff like this that's four to five it kind of pays for the stuff like this that's just beat up <laughs> casper 29 awesome comic book but terrible condition spooky number 70 this one's a little bit better i do love the silver age harvey stuff casper 48 okay that's pretty cool uh, Bullwinkle, that's a cool... I mean, it's water damage, which is a shame, but... Bullwinkle number one, I bet that has a little value. I mean, they're selling a very good find for 30 on my comic shop. So in this shape, it might be like four or five bucks. Uh, Man from Uncle, that is actually cool. Casper 55, okay, that is cool. I love, love, love Casper. Or Silver Age Casper. A little bit of water damage, but overall, it actually looks pretty nice. It's like a solid good plus. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. And my comic shop has one in similar condition for like three bucks. So it's probably only worth three bucks, but I really like that. Oh, this is cool. Ripley's Believe It or Not, True Ghost Stories. Very cool looking comic book. Uh, Korax, Son of Tarzan. That is cool. Texas Ranger in Action, number 68. Get Smart. That is actually kind of cool. Rough and Ready. Bonanza. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head because a lot of these don't have the numbers on the cover. Uh, Uncle Scrooge comic, uh, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, number 70. Sad Sack, number 90. This one actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. That's neat. Uh, Quick Draw McGraw, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, Life with Archie, number 111. Okay, maybe that's the one that I saw the strip. So that's not, you know, it's like a 2 or $3 comic book. Uh, Jughead, 197. It looks good, but the side is kind of beat up. Uh, Sad Sack 221, that's kind of cool. Sweetie Pie number, oh, it's a Del 4 color, 1185. So they're selling that on my comic shop in this condition for like three or four bucks. So not super valuable, but still cool. Uh, Dennis the Menace in Hollywood. And Classic Illustrated is number 25. Okay, so the first stack, not too bad. There's some stuff I'm really excited to get. Uh, a lot of kind of cheaper stuff. I wouldn't say I got a great deal, but I'm pretty happy with that. It looks like we went through this stack of stuff. Uh, I didn't see those yet. So I think it was this stack of stuff and maybe that stack of stuff. Okay, let's go through the next bag. Also, if you guys see me pass over something that has high value, even in low grade, just let me know. Okay, next stack. Oh, this one looks pretty beat up too. <laughs> let's move the camera down a little bit so we can see. Okay, our army at war 239. Oh, that one, the back cover is missing. We have Jughead's Jokes, number 24. Uh, Lil Archie, 23. Cool comic. Wish it was a better grade, though, but very cool. Okay, we have the Giant Size, Lois Lane. This cover's a little bit chipped right there. Uh, okay, this is in worse shape than I thought it would be. So we have Lil Lulu in Paris. Very awesome cover, but the whole side is all chewed up. 
I like that though. That's pretty cool. Okay, we have Classic Illustrated number 55. We have the Three Stooges. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, old Tom and Jerry. Do you like that? Uh, Leave It to Beaver. It's a four color, 11.91. Uh, new Terry Tunes. Rough and Ready. Uh, Creatures on the Loose, number 12. That's actually kind of cool. The Three Stooges meet Hercules. That's actually kind of cool too. <laughs> 13 going and 18. That one's beat up. I have that issue already though, so not too worried. Uh, Walt Disney Scamp, Tweety and Sylvester, Yogi Bear Birthday Party. This one is chewed. Classic Illustrated is 143. Daffy Duck. Uh, Walt Disney's Comic and Stories, Archie and Me, Three Stooges, Archie's Joe Book 162. Uh, the Flintstones, this one's actually pretty cool. I wonder what number this is. This might have some value to it, this one. This is number three from 1962. All right, I can't find any comparable selling on eBay at the moment. And my comic shop is sold out, but it's in pretty decent shape. It has a little bit of a chew right there and a couple of watermarks. But overall, it's a nice, good, good plus. I think this comic is probably 10 to 15 bucks. That's a that's a pretty decent hit in a collection like this. Okay, we have a coverless Tom and Jerry. We have a Classics Illustrated number 36. Uh, Lois Lane number 119. This one looks a little bit worse than I thought it would be. It's like water damaged. Uh, Everything's Archie number 14. Strange 235. Really cool looking comic book. Not, you know, maybe five bucks in this condition, but still awesome, awesome. Uh, Sad Sack Laugh Special number 59. Richie Rich Millions number 47. That's actually in pretty decent shape. Someone's hair is on it. We don't want that. That's uh, probably like a very good. This is, I believe, Silver Age. Let me see the date. No, 1971. So it's, you know, in this condition, probably still three to five bucks. Not too bad. Oh, we have more Flintstones. Okay. It's a little bit water damage, which is a shame. But... It's from 1962, so it's early Flintstones. I bet... Oh, you know what? This That's coming off. So there's a water stain right there, but other than that, it's not too bad. It says the Flintstones pin-up number one. I'm going to actually look that one up. My comic shop has a go to this for sale for seven. So, I mean, this is... Uh, I think I could clean it up, actually, because it looks mostly just dirty, but not like... There is one stain right here. But other than that, I mean, it's probably like a $5 comic book. That's not too bad. Uh, Huckleberry Hound... Another kind of cardstock cover. This is uh, not sure what the issue is, but that is cool. I bet that has some value to it as well. Little Archie number 65, very cool. And this one's actually in pretty decent shape. Uh, Action Comics 409, but the cover is detached and in front of the issue. <laughs> okay, that doesn't really have too much value. Uh, Vacation Funnies number nine. That's actually really cool. I wish it was better shape, but that is awesome. Uh, Richie Rich Millions number 50. Okay. All right, so that was that stack. Got a lot of lint on the table. Final stack, I had nothing super valuable hopping out, but I've seen enough kind of like five to ten dollar comic books that kind of make up for the stuff that doesn't have value. So I'm not, you know, I'm not becoming rich. Not that I bought these to sell. I bought them mostly for myself, but uh, I'm I'm not disappointed. It's kind of what I expected. Okay, we have Fox and Crow number sixty nine. Love this cover. Very cool looking comic book. Uh, Blondie, don't see the issue on that. Oh no, number 123. Rocky and his friends, number... Oh, it's a Del 4 color, 11.52. Not in the best shape. Tom and Jerry. Walt Disney Comics and Stories, 237. That's someone that's colored in. Woody Woodpecker. The Lone Ranger. Huckleberry Hound, pretty beat. Billy the Kid, pretty beat. Chip and Dale, that's actually kind of cool. Rin Tin Tin and Rusty, Rocky and his friends, Lassie, Rough and Ready. Oh, Davi Gillis, that is cool. I actually want to put all set of these together. So number eight, not in the best shape, but just happy to have it. I believe it's Bob Oxner covers. So I do want to put that set together. Uh, Classics Illustrated 66, Ready Goose and the Lost Logs Keeper. So I guess this is like a freebie promo comic book. This might have a little bit of value. That we'll have to look up. Oh, Chili Willy. I like Chili Willy. It's a Del 4 color. Woody Woodpecker. Daffy Duck. Fury. Roy Rogers and Trigger. Uh, oh, this is a cool looking cover. Milton Cannon, Steve Cannon. It's a Del 4 color, number 939. I'm going to look that one up.
I love old sci-fi covers a lot. Yeah, my comic shop has a good at like three bucks. It's not really worth anything. Uh, World's Finest, number 194. Jimmy Olsen, number 130. Superman, number 236. Love that cover. Uh, DC Super Giants, number 24. It looks in actually pretty decent shape, except for a couple of nicks on the bottom. But that's actually pretty cool. Okay, we have a uh, cover list. We have Flash 191. Again, I feel like something like this, if I put out for a dollar or two, someone might buy it. Uh, ooh, this is cool. I mean, it's trashed. But we have a Strange Tales, number 147. Whoop, and the back cover's falling off. So that's falling apart. It's still very cool, though. I like that. Uh, okay, here's the cover list stuff. So we have Little Dot, number 48. Old Sad Sack. Casper Page. See a Casper, Hardy Boys number one, Wendy the Good Witch, Fury, Diver Dan number two, Space Mouse, uh, Woody Woodpecker, and it looks like a Bugs Bunny that had the top torn. Okay, so overall, my opinion of this collection is uh, I probably overpaid a little bit, but. I'm not disappointed because that was a ton of fun. There's definitely probably like a dozen comic books I'm really happy to add in my collection. And then, uh, you know, another like 30 or 40 that I'm like kind of happy to have, but a little bit too beat up. And then some junk. Uh, overall though, the stuff I'm keeping, if I went to a comic shop and bought them one issue at a time, I probably would have paid more money. So I'm actually, that's not too bad. And honestly, a collection like this is fun to go through with you guys on video. So just for the video itself, it's worth it. Okay, so we have another gamble box. This one was $37.44 for about 80 comic books, I believe. But in the picture for this lot, half of them are coverless. And then the other stack looked like it was just Archie comic books. But I noticed I hit on some DC Silver Age stuff. So I figured 50 cents a comic book, I just need a couple, like three or four comic books for 10 bucks and it pays for the whole collection. So I love a gamble a lot like this because again, a lot of people don't bid on them because it looks like a pile of junk because of the coverless stuff. But for every coverless one, if there's one in good shape, then you're paying, I paid 50 cents a comic book. So basically I'm paying a dollar, maybe a dollar 50 for the ones that aren't coverless. And I'm willing to gamble a dollar or two for any Silver Age or early Bronze Age stuff because you never know what's going to be in this box. And sometimes it pays off. Sometimes you get a really awesome key issue or sometimes you just get a kind of nicer grade older comic book that just because of the grade is worth 20 bucks. Okay, I'm excited. Let's dig through this. Hopefully I'm not disappointed by that. Okay, so here's another one of these ratty mystery boxes. I wonder if this one will be better than the other one. So this one was cheaper. I paid $37.44 for this collection. Uh, it was supposed to be about 80 comic books, I believe. But as you can see, half of them are coverless. So those are probably worthless unless there's a key issue kind of mixed in there. So I basically bought maybe a dollar a piece on that half. And usually the Archie's a dollar is probably okay to pay on the bronze and silver age stuff. And it's a cool cover there. So I'm hoping there's a lot of really cool Archie's in here. But what I really saw sitting here was the Angel and Ape, which is a Bob Ostner cover. I, I want to get all the stuff he's done. So I thought... If that issue is at least a very good, probably worth like 10, 15 bucks. So that's like half what I spent right there. So if I paid for half of that and then $15 for the rest, that's actually not too bad. And uh, I'm not sure if you're on my comic shop, they have that issue in fine for $22. So I'm kind of hoping there's other showcase, like if the dolphin showcase is in there, or if uh, you could have the first hawk and dove in there. There could be other issues around that issue that have value. So uh, I think this is the first Creeper appearance. So there could be other things in that stack from this run of comic books that have value. So I kind of like gambling when I see one issue from a series that has a lot of valuable issues. Because it's, you never know. I've done it many times where I find a good key issue in a lot like this. All right, let's dig in. Let's see what we got. Okay, first we're going to have a lot of coverless stuff. And uh, it's going to be hard to know what it is. It looks like a lot of... Arch oh, this would have been cool. This is Bunny number six. Ah, it's missing the cover. Bunny series I want to get, and these are actually kind of expensive. But I can enjoy the interiors. I can read it now. <laughs> okay, but that's a good sign if there's some better stuff mixed in here. Okay, Betty and Veronica number 147. Pretty bad shape, but that's cool. Okay, Josie and the Pussycats number 54. That's, uh... Is that... What issue do they start the band? I think it's around there. Okay, so number 45 is when it becomes Josie and the Pussycats from She's Josie. That's a key issue. This is not the key issue, but it's in pretty good shape. 
Uh, I bet this is a five to ten dollar comic book. That's actually not too bad of a hit. I'm actually really happy with that. Okay, and then we have Laugh 251. This one actually looks to be in pretty good shape too. Like a very good maybe. Okay, that's awesome. I think I have ten dollars worth of value right there on those two. So we're a third of the way. Okay, Strange Adventures 185. That's cool actually. You never know. You might have a key issue in these coverless ones. And if you have a key issue, all of a sudden it's worth a lot. Our Army at War 178. And you guys can tell me if I'm... I'm just reading the numbers. I don't know what is what. Our Fighting Forces, number 50. Dennis the Menace, number 62. Pretty bad shape. Uh, Millie the Model. I don't see the number. Oh, number 153. That's cool. Would be nice to have that. This... Uh... Looks like a Patsy Walker. Probably a 60s Patsy Walker. I would, I probably would have liked that too with the cover. But that's okay. I'm not... I didn't really buy it for the coverless stuff. I'm just hoping that maybe there's some value mixed in the coverless stuff. Okay, better and Veronica 185. Cool cover. Uh, not too bad shape. Uh, that I'd probably get 2 or $3 out of if I was going to sell it. Little Kids number 2. This is actually, I think, a semi-rare Marvel comic book. I'm actually going to look that one up. Because I don't really see those too often. Okay, not too valuable. It's my comic shop has four dollars on a good, so it's probably like a two to three dollar comic book. Not too bad. I'll take it. Uh, Blondie number one ninety three. Archie and me in terrible shape. Josie twenty nine. Uh, pretty beat up, but still cool. I do want to put a full set of the Josie and the Pussycat comics together. Uh, it looks like a Sergeant Rock, but the cover, you know, is cut right there, and a Dennis the Menace cut. Okay. Not too bad, though. That first stack was actually better than I thought it was going to be. I saw this really cool Dawn ad on the back of one of these. I thought that was kind of neat. All right, the next little stack. This looks like all ones with covers. So this might be better. Honestly, the Betty and Veronica's from the early 70s, I usually get 2 or $3 out of them. So I don't mind getting a bunch of these, even if I have them already. If I don't have them, even better. Betty and Veronica, 182. Everything's Archie, 28. Jughead, 194. Archie Annual 23, that one's pretty beat up. Archie and Me 47, this one's beat up. Laugh 246. Archie 229, not too bad. Everything's Archie number 13. What year is that? That's earlier, I think. 1971, so Bronze Age. Betty and Veronica 253. And Jughead's Jokes number 26. So what is that? So 11 comics there. I could probably get $20 out of that if I was to sell. Maybe a little bit more on the better ones. Okay, another handful that have covers. Uh, okay, that's cool. We have Josie 38. Not terrible. I mean, it's like a good, good. Not a good because it's got enough little bits of damage. Still cool though. Uh, this looks like a Sergeant Rock maybe. No, our Fighting Forces number 99. Uh... No. Okay, here's the angel. Uh, not in that great of shape. I thought it might be a little bit better. Uh, I still think it's... I mean, it's their first appearance. And I have a nice copy, so I'll probably sell this one. But I probably get like 5 to $8 out of that. That's not too bad. Uh, Life with Archie, 115 Betty and Me, 36 Everything's Archie, 17 Laugh, 248 Laugh, 307 Life with Archie, 92 Pep 251, Jughead 221, Madhouse Glads. This is a, I believe this is like a horror kind of cover, so that's probably worth a little bit more. Archie's Joke Book, Pep 265, Archie's Joke Book 164, Pep 252, Laugh 217, Jughead 196, Life with Archie 141. Really cool cover. I like that one. I just like the overall look of that one. Archie 217, Sabrina the Teenage Witch number four. That is actually really cool. I wish it was in better shape. All right, I like that one. Uh, Archie's TV Laugh Out number 10. Okay, so a lot more Archie's than I thought. I thought we might get a little bit more DC mixed in there, which I can't blame because I do like Archie's. I collect them and they do sell well for me. Okay, so this looks like the last stack of ones with actual covers. Archie's Pals and Gals 111, Betty and Veronica number 191. Uh, Betty and Veronica, number 196. That one's not too bad. Sad Sack, 170. Mad About Millie, number one. That's actually uh, probably a good plus. The very good... Oh, no. She's colored in, though. Uh, that still probably has a little bit of value. Richie Rich, 148. Richie Rich Profits, number 20. 13 going on 18. I don't think I have that one, so that's cool. Richie Rich and Jackie Joker, number 18. And Little Archie, number 98. Okay, so the cover stuff, 
Uh, there's enough stuff like this that I could probably get a dollar or two for to kind of pay for the lot. So I'm actually okay with it. I didn't lose anything. I don't think I've made anything. I got a couple issues for myself. And there's still a big stack of coverless stuff we can go through just to see if anything jumps out. But for the most part, this is not going to be worth anything. That's a Flintstone. Oh, this is a Katie Keene coverless. I wonder what issue it is. Okay, this I'm going to have to clean up a little bit so I don't get it on everything else. Uh, I'm guessing this is a pinup parade or not 100% sure what issue it is. But you know what? This is kind of fun because I really like Katie Keene and having a coverless one, I can just have it around to look at, maybe do something with it. Not sure exactly what issue it is, but that is actually kind of cool. Kind of cool for a couple. Oh, another Katie Keene. Okay. This is... Oh, no, that's just a page. That's probably from the same issue. <laughs> uh, okay, we got a coverless Casper. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Donald Duck, Spooky. Uh, oh, okay, we have a couple more mixed in here with covers. Uh, another Our Fighting Forces, maybe. No, GI Combat. Okay, that is cool. Uh, Chili 17. Uh, not too bad. Okay, a little bit more value there. Uh, old Romance comic book. What series is this? Girls Love 128. It would be nice to have that complete. Little Lada. GI Combat 126. Ponytail. Porky Pig. Just some covers. That's to the Porky Pig, I think. So I can at least put that with the issue. Okay, and then one more stack of coverless stuff. I know this is kind of boring, but you never know what's going to pop out. You might get something of value. This looks like someone's random trash thrown in there. <laughs> uh, Red Jimmy cover. Just a hot stuff issue. Teen Titans, 18. I mean, that's kind of cool. Wish I had its cover. Let's see, we got DC Superstars number one. Uh, oh, another bunny. I kind of wish the bunnies had the covers because I do want to put that set together. I think they're cute. Uh, oh, this looks like an old Batman. The older, the better. Uh, it's missing, I think, the first page. So, not sure what that is. It might have value, might not have value. This is Charlton comic book. Girls romances. Young Romance. So this is all stuff I would love to collect. I just want the covers. <laughs> I don't want them coverless. So Lulu. Sad Sack. Dennis the Menace. Uh, another Katie Keene. Uh, I'm not sure what issue this is. But that's still fun. I kind of actually like having a couple of coverless ones I can play with. Uh, okay, we have a few more covers. I didn't know. Okay, we have Laugh 250. A little extra value, Reggie and Me 47, Laugh 221, Archie and Me 44, Jughead 201, Three Musketeers, Bugs Bunny, and Melvin Monster number five. I do kind of like these. Okay, so that was not bad. I actually think, I, honestly, if I'm going to get a dollar or two, maybe even three to five for a bunch of the Archies, uh, I'd probably actually double my money on that lot. So that's actually not that bad. And obviously I'm gonna fill in my collection with the ones I need. Okay, I had so much fun going through all these comic books. I'm hoping to bring you guys another comic book haul very soon. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna put a couple other mega epic comic book hauls right here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.